it's Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. So I want to talk about three takeaways from a recent study of deaths in 2020. Uh, this was done by Outside Magazine Online, uh, working with uh, bikemaps.org. It's a voluntary organization. But there's some things in here. I, I don't want to talk about the deaths because um, that's not the what the focus of our conversation will be about. But there's some really interesting takeaways from where these crashes happened, which I think we all need to understand because I think it affects the choices we make about when and where we ride. Uh, I was a little surprised that they, they had one segment on where these crashes occurred in terms of suburban, urban, and rural. And surprisingly, they're pretty evenly divided. Um, I think intuitively, I would have thought the urban setting would have created more. Um, and they point out some reasons why, for instance, the rural settings, um, because those roads typically don't have shoulders, they typically don't have um, bike paths. Uh, they have they lack like the type of infrastructure that you'd find in a more urban setting where there's stop signs and signals and all the things that go with intersections. Um, and I think you know the the mischief usually occurs in those settings at intersections. That's where the likely problem will occur and um, people are not necessarily looking for cyclists you know they're going to roll through those lights or the, those stop signs so it's just something to keep in mind I, I it wouldn't deter me from riding on a, on, on a rural road and i would always generally take a rural road over an urban road um but i just thought it was interesting and i think it's something that we need to study before we kind of map where we're going to spend our time riding our bikes um one of the most interesting things to me was that, as the second point, the most crashes occurred on arterial roads by far. I think their, their data was 65% of the fatal crashes across the country occurred on an arterial road. So what is an arterial road? You know, typically it's the high volume, urban, typically suburban setting, it's the road that takes all the feeder roads and takes them towards the major, you know, the interstate highway, for instance, or the major thoroughfares. It's your area where there's stop signs, there's stoplights, there's urban uh, development on both sides. Uh, typically, your commercial areas you get multiple places where cars enter and exit driveways onto the road. Uh, speed limits are going to be at least 30 or 35 and many times 45 miles an hour. Uh, and one of the things they talked about was the unprotected, unprotected left turn lane. So the driver is waiting at the center brake. He wants to make a left turn at an intersection. There's no light for the left turn. Driver is hyper focused on cars, of course, coming against where they want to turn. And they never see the cyclist who's driving in the same direction as the cars coming towards them. They wait, they wait, they wait, they see a break, they go. And it's like, oh, where'd the, where'd the bike come from? So I think it's one of those things, again, that we need to be, try to be as familiar as we can with the roads where we are riding. When you're, wait, when you're approaching an intersection, which is always an area of mischief, uh, what are the oncoming cars doing in terms of turning left? Do they have a protected light? Do they have a, an arrow? Do they have, uh, how, how busy is it? Are, do they have the opportunity to see you or are they simply focus on other drivers? Um, my choice personally is I wouldn't ride on an arterial road if I had any choice about it at all. I know sometimes we have to take them to get from point A to point B. And sometimes it's the only way to get from point A to point B and you're on an arterial road for a short distance. But in my own personal life, I would minimize my exposure to those roads. Uh, this definitely affects those who commute on bicycles. I understand that. Uh, but they definitely have uh, higher speed limits, greater volumes, greater commercial activity, greater opportunities for cars turning left and right. Um, and, you know, making a hurried, just a quick decision to get in or get out. So for all those reasons, I would tend to stay away from them myself. Um, and then the final thing I'd like to point out is that uh, there was a definite spike in 
bike sales, of course, we all know that bike shops are sold out. I think in, in the United States, in the latter part of 2020, there was $4.9 billion in bike sales uh, through the year. But that's also reflected in crashes, unfortunately. When you look at the data for crashes nationwide, they definitely spiked uh, in the late spring and summer of 2020. Um, when the cases were going up because more people, more cyclists were on the road and more cyclists were in an area where they were exposed, you know, the arterial roads and what have you. And unfortunately, what's happened with the COVID crisis is so many people have been drawn to cycling with no prior experience, or maybe they had some experience when they were much, much younger, but really had not been riding that often and weren't as familiar with what to be careful about, what to watch for, how to keep out of trouble, how to, what are the tendency of drivers when they get into certain areas. So I think all those things uh, in my way of thinking affected these numbers. Um, I think the, the, in, in all, I would like to say that I think the more people on the road on the bike, the better cycling is because um, drivers are more accustomed to seeing us. And um, uh, I think I, I, I go back to cycling as a safe sport. I mean, the data is that it's safer than many, many other ways of transportation when you look at it per accident per mile, so or, or per million miles. So let's not let this data get us too uh, uh, wrapped up in, in, in angst because there's a lot to learn, a lot to apply to our own lives, a lot of ways that we can make ourselves safer on the road. Um, this is Ash Wednesday when I'm filming this. That's why I have ashes on my forehead. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Easter. I'm Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. You know, we represent cyclists, have a special passion for helping cyclists in Florida. If you've been injured on a bike or a passenger or driver in an automobile, I'm, I'll be happy to help you. You call me, I'll be there. We have a statewide practice. Uh, I look forward to talking to you on the next live stream. Take care, bye.